From mysterious bunkers to ancient bakeries, burial sites to prehistoric teeth, be ready to enter the world of the cool, the strange, and the bizarre. Not only that, these amazing finds were found in the most random of places. You never know where real treasure might be waiting to be revealed. 20 Most Incredible Discoveries Found in the Middle of Nowhere An Old Bunker Two guys noticed these pipes sticking out of the ground. They never expected this to be unearthed. Picture it, you're on vacation visiting your bestie and you're out for a hike exploring. Suddenly you notice two pipes sticking out of the ground. After further investigation, you and your bestie have discovered a whole new world underground. Well, that's exactly what happened to these two guys. Dale from Baltimore in the US went to visit his friend Mike in Germany. Mike mentioned a pair of mysterious pipes that were protruding from the ground. Since the area was near his home, he suspected the pipes were part of something deep underground. And there were signs all around the area that were indicative of some sort of structure hidden beneath the forest floor. That was an understatement. They spotted the concrete entrance, a dark rectangular hole that was sunk into the ground. Someone else had definitely been here since the lock on the gate was broken. The pair pushed it open and started to walk down the stairs. They had unwittingly stumbled upon the secret back entranceway into these subterranean depths, built in 1939 during World War II. This was beyond a bunker. It was used as a naval intelligence school. But soon after, the German Navy moved in and transformed it into their U-boat headquarters. Eureka City Eureka City in South Africa was for a long time a ghost town. It was established in 1885, when gold was discovered, located in the northern section of Mountainlands Nature Reserve. In 1887, it had a population of around 700 people. It had three shops, three hotels, a bakery, a music hall, and bars to cater to the diggers in the area. But more recently, the town has been revitalized by a local farmer for a disturbing reason. A refuge for whites-only South Africans. The founder of the community has made plots of property available exclusively for white South Africans, wanting to fight against what he calls the uprooting of the white race. Fueled by fears of farm murders and land expropriation, the founder felt Eureka was the perfect place to execute his plan saying Eureka is a serious attempt to re-establish white people in safety. According to the founder, this new community in a former ghost town would let the white race without bloodshed acquire a piece of their birth land. However, these plans have caught the attention of the local government. They were far from happy with the founder's attempts to start a racially segregated town and poured scorn on the proposed development. There has been no application to the council for the bill, and if it goes ahead, it will be done illegally. Authorities 100% condemn these plans. Number 18. The Mystery Cave In Canada, a recently found cave in Wells Gray Provincial Park has the potential to yield scientific discoveries and be a marketing boon in the surrounding community, according to experts. They recently led an expedition to explore this massive hole. The massive hole in the ground visible on Google Earth was spotted and photographed during a mountain caribou survey. The people who first spotted the cave from the helicopter named it Sarlacc's Pit because of its similarity to the lair of the Sarlacc, a creature from the Star Wars Return of the Jedi. The cave has a waterfall flowing into it that may be moving too fast to allow many creatures to call the area home, but more research is needed. About a mile away from the mouth of the cave, her team spotted a small spring from the air that was flowing out of what looked like passages, potentially the cave's exit. The entrance pit to the cave is about 330 feet long and 128 feet wide, while its depth is hard to measure because of the mist from a waterfall. Initial examinations show it is at least 440 feet deep. It's about the size of a soccer field. What's exciting about it is that it has the potential for new species and a new understanding of the role between water and rock in the alpine environment. Holes in Skull Evidence of the first surgical procedure date to 6500 BC. That's almost 8,000 years ago. And recently, when archaeologists uncovered the burial site of two brothers who lived during the 15th century BC in Israel, they were surprised to discover that one of them had brain surgery shortly before he died. 
Up to this point, archaeologists had evidence that trephination has been this universal widespread type of surgery for thousands of years. But in this region of the world, experts don't see it so often. There are only about a dozen examples of trephination. The finding marks the earliest example of this type of cranial surgery found in the ancient Near East. Trephination was the practice of drilling or cutting a hole through the skull to expose the brain. This was thought to cure mental illness, migraines, and epileptic seizures, and was used as emergency surgery after a head wound. The remains of the brothers who lived during the Bronze Age between 1550 BC and 1450 BC were found during an excavation of a tomb in the ancient city of Tel Megiddo. The older brother, estimated to be between 20 and 40 years old, had angular notched trephination. His scalp was cut and then a sharp beveled edge instrument was used on the frontal bone of the skull that made a square-shaped hole. Ouch. Researchers believe the two men were either high-ranking elite members of society or perhaps even royals. Rare Ancient Odeon On an island off of Greece, new work at this ancient archaeological site called Lissos has uncovered this Odeon, which is similar to modern theater. For the first time in over 60 years as part of a project to promote and protect the local archaeological sites. An excavation was carried out which brought to light a large part of the structure. Tucked into a cove in southwest Crete are the ruins of Lissos, an ancient town whose archaeological remains are accessible only by sea or on foot. Because of its isolation, this site has not been investigated by archaeologists for several decades. But experts believe that Lissos was inhabited long before its name made it into history books in the 4th century BC. Its location across the Mediterranean Sea from a major ancient Greek city likely meant that this place was an important stop on trade routes. Structures from various time periods at Lissos are relatively well preserved, including a temple, a residential area, an impressive cemetery with two-story tombs, Roman baths, and churches. Archaeologists have now added this Odeon on the list of structures following the first excavation at Lizos in more than half a century. The discovery of a public building at a central point of the ancient city adds new data to the region's history and archaeology. Speaking of ancient, ancient Viking treasure. A treasure hunter recently found a highly valuable Viking hoard in a cornfield in northwest Denmark. Talk about beginner's luck. The amateur detectorist discovered silver jewelry and nearly 300 incredibly rare Viking coins, found near a Viking ring fort dating to 980 AD. They are of Danish, Arab, and Germanic origin, indicating the extensive trade and raiding networks of the intimidating Vikings. These artifacts are revealing new insight into the reign and religious ambitions of the powerful Viking king, Harold Bluetooth, according to archaeologists, and not that kind of Bluetooth. The Danish coins are exciting to archaeologists because they include cross coins, struck during Bluetooth's reign in the 970s and 980s. Harold had converted from pagan Norse beliefs to Christianity, and spreading his new religion was part of his plan to unify the warring Viking tribes of this region. Archaeologists aren't sure why the king gained the nickname Bluetooth. Some historians suggest he may have had a prominent discolored tooth. The Vikings believed that burying their treasure allowed them to find it again after death. Excavations show that the valuables were originally buried in two hordes about 100 feet apart. Since then, these hordes have been spread around by farm machinery, and the legend of Bluetooth goes on. A rare rock. Ember grease is a rare substance formed in the digestive systems of whales and is highly valued in the manufacture of perfumes and in Eastern medicine practices. The estimated market value is around 23,000 US dollars per pound. Recently, a resident of Malaysia went fishing. They found a lump of garbage in the area. They originally thought that it was garbage that had washed over from the sea. After pulling it out of the water, they had no idea that what she had found was a lump of whale vomit, which counted as no less than treasure. However, the fisherman's father thought the waxy floating lump could be whale vomit. They had almost 10 pounds of the stuff. Jackpot. Whale vomit is highly priced because it's very rare. It is only produced in the digestive tract of sperm whales, an endangered species. Sperm whales eat and their bile ducts produce a compound. The digested product that the whale regurgitates starts floating in the ocean. 
The end product is a waxy substance called ambergris. It is used by perfume makers as it allows the scents to last longer. A sample of the 10 pound whale vomit was sent to local experts to ensure that it is actually ambergris. If it is, it could make the fishermen extremely rich, but the team would be able to tell the actual price only after investigation. Who knew whale vomit was so valuable? World's oldest carpet. Most of us know that Persian rug weaving is an ancient art, but have you ever wondered about whether or not it would actually be possible to identify the world's oldest rug? The experts have done all the work for us. Here's what it would be like. This is the Paziric rug, dating from the 4th century BC and at approximately 2,400 years old. It's the oldest known oriental rug. It has a high knot count of about 225 symmetrical knots per square inch, and its intricate and complex design consists of a skillful combination of geometric, floral, and pictorial patterns. The design includes 24 cross-shaped figures, and each of the figures has four lotus buds. This is framed by a border of griffins, which is again followed by another border of deer. The rug was discovered during an archaeological excavation in 1949 in the Pazaric Valley in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. The exact location where the rug was found was a semi-frozen burial tomb built into the mountainside closest to the borders of Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and China. The tombs were very durable and their inner structures were extremely well designed and well constructed. And it was all of these factors contributing to the preservation of the rug and how it remained throughout the centuries. The rug is a testament to the long history of carpet weaving in Persia. Two-faced men. Archaeologists have revealed new painted murals within a pillared hall on a rock outcrop in a valley in northern Peru. What grabbed the team's attention was the pillar painted with the person with two faces had never before been seen in this kind of art or any other pre-Hispanic tradition of the Andean region. Historians hypothesize that the images, which date back nearly 1,400 years, could represent artists' attempts to experiment with portraying movement or narrative. Created between 550 and 800 CE, this structure is unlike any other ceremonial center of the ancient civilization known for its artists and artisans. Artists created these extensive paintings that lined the walls after smoothing and plastering adobe temple walls and pillars. Once the section was painted white, painters would sketch supernatural, mythological, or human figures on the surface using pointed tools to make incisions before coloring in the outlines. Scientists have been researching this site since the 1950s, hoping to understand and document these people who lived hundreds of years before the Inca Empire. Beyond the murals, researchers also uncovered bits of feathers and textiles likely brought to the coast from faraway communities. Their research suggests that this culture was much more diverse than previously thought. Oldest Pearling Town The practice of pearling, which involves divers recovering pearls from oysters or mussels found in seas and lakes, has been part of the Persian Gulf's heritage for more than 7,000 years, according to experts. A group of archaeologists in the United Arab Emirates recently found that they believe to be the oldest pearling town in the Persian Gulf on Sinaya Island. The 30-acre town functioned between the late 6th and mid-8th centuries, predating the Islamic civilization, according to researchers. The researchers' findings reveal the town to be one of the largest surviving urbanized settlements ever found. In what is today the UAE, it is believed to have housed thousands of residents many of whom relied on the pearling industry. At peak times for the pearling market, huge numbers of people were involved in the industry. In neighboring Abu Dhabi, almost two-thirds of the male population was involved in pearling in the 19th century. While other pearling settlements are known to have existed in the region, this one is particularly unique, not only because of the community's age and size, but also because it was not seasonal. It operated year-round. Oldest Tree while it has been on the list of oldest trees, this tree is now rivaling others to be possibly the oldest tree in the world. Known as Gran Abuelo, or Great Grandfather in Spanish, that towers over a ravine in the Chilean Andes. In Chile's Alcere Costero National Park, researchers bored a partial hole into the tree as far as possible without damaging it. They used an increment borer, a T-shaped drill to excise a narrow cylinder of wood without harming the tree. The partial plug of wood yielded approximately 2,400 tightly spaced growth rings. 
They then use statistical modeling based on data from 2,400 trees. And experts estimated the tree may be roughly 5,400 years old, a new computer model suggests. If that date can be confirmed, it would make the Gran Abuelo nearly 600 years older than the current official record holder for the world's oldest tree. While the tree has survived for thousands of years, its future is in doubt. Climate change and a 10-year drought have damaged the majestic tree. A second tree growing from the top of the towering giant is now dying. The ancient tree has been encircled by a narrow platform walkway that is crushing its last living roots. And the myriad of tourists that come to see the tree every year do further damage when they walk on it. Caesar's Savage When Roman King Julius Caesar unleashed his legendary military campaign during the first century BCE, he wrote about small sharpened wood stakes that would line the fences of his camps, an ancient Roman version of barbed wire. The spikes were located in what is now the German town of Bad Ems. Until recently, no examples of this military innovation had ever been found. Now, for the first time, researchers have discovered an intact artifact, and in the process, they've dispelled a 130-year-old assumption about the area's history. Archaeological interest in the site goes back much further. In 1897, exploratory digs here unearthed processed silver and metal slag. As a result, researchers thought that the site had once housed a Roman smelting operation. This theory was also supported by the nearby presence of the limes, a fortification that made up part of the northern border wall of the Roman Empire. Researchers assumed that the limes built in 110 CE and the smelting operation were connected. Since then, excavations have uncovered two previously unknown military camps in the area, and researchers discovered the wooden spikes in the second camp. These discoveries led to new questions. The researchers think the camp, apparently once intended as a solid build, was never completed. Why was it dismantled so soon, and what purpose did it serve? The mystery remains. Unearth a Bakery In Metsamor, Armenia, archaeologists have uncovered a 3,000-year-old bakery. Yep. The discovery was made within the remnants of a large structure, housing multiple ovens, which had succumbed to a fire. Even after that, the bakery was still housing several sacks worth of flour embedded in the soil. It was primarily wheat flour that was used, and quantities point to large-scale production and a certain culture of bread making within the region. Both at a micro and macro level, it's estimated that up to 3.5 tons of flour was originally stored in the building. Unfortunately, only a few sacks worth of organic material has survived over the centuries, although not much is known about ancient inhabitants since they didn't have a written language. Researchers do know that the fortified city became part of the biblical kingdom of Ararat after being conquered by a king in the 8th century BC. Prior to this, it would have covered 247 acres and was once surrounded by temple complexes with seven sanctuaries. Researchers estimate that the bakery was operational between the 11th and 9th centuries BC, during the early Iron Age, according to experts. Huge Footprint this dramatic coastline in North Yorkshire is fertile ground for fossil hunters, with 160 million year old ammonites and dinosaur footprints common on the seashore. It's actually referred to as the Dinosaur Coast, and recently a record-breaking dinosaur print found on Yorkshire's coast may have been left by a predator stopping for a rest 166 million years ago, researchers believe. The three-toed footprint is one of the only six to be found in the area, and the first one was found in 1934. The team who studied the track after it was found concluded it was made by a giant carnivore, like a megalosaurus. Scientists said that the amazing 3.3-foot fossil is the largest ever discovered in the region. The footprint is the largest left by a theropod, a group of bipedal dinosaurs which also include Tyrannosaurus rex, found to date in Yorkshire. Reaching between 23 and 30 feet long and weighing up to 2 tons, the Megalosaurus is one of the largest predators of its day. It had somewhat short but strong arms with sharp hook-like claws on three fingers, perfectly designed for gripping onto prey and slashing at it. It also had long, powerful hind legs, good for chasing down prey. This important discovery adds further evidence that meat-eating giants once roamed this area during the Jurassic period. Prehistoric Human Tooth in a remote cave in Laos, an ancient tooth is helping to sketch an unknown chapter in the human history. Archaeologists uncovered the tooth in a place known as Cobra Cave, 
and archaeologists estimated the molar was between 131,000 and 164,000 years old, based on analysis of cave sediment. The dating of three animal bones found in the same layer and the age of the rock overlying the fossil. Archaeologists were clued in on the age of the tooth's owner by its pristineness. It was an adult or permanent tooth, but had no signs of wear and tear. Researchers believe the tooth belonged to a young female who was likely a denivisan, an enigmatic group of early humans first identified in 2010. The lower molar is the first fossil evidence placing denizens in Southeast Asia and may help untangle a puzzle that had long vexed experts in human evolution. Denizens were freezing their butts off in Russia. They were adapting to high altitude in Tibet. And this tooth means they were living in balmy tropical caves of Laos all at the same time, but doing it 100,000 years earlier than modern humans were doing it. The Laos tooth found in the tropics shows how adaptable these ancient humans were, and it supports the results of geneticists who say that modern humans and the Denizovans might have met in Southeast Asia. 7 Foot Sword this giant 7-foot long sword that lay buried for more than 1,600 years was found in Japan. The iron weapon was uncovered in a tomb from a burial mound in Nara. Archaeologists have been pulling layers of dirt away from the burial mound that measures 350 feet across and up to 32 feet high. The mound is known as Kofun after the Kofun period of Japanese history, when they were built between 300 AD and 710 AD. So far, they have conducted aerial laser surveys and excavation surveys and obtained important results in clarifying the structure of the burial mounds. The survey showed ritual spaces confined within the mound, which led the team to a grave pit where a clay box housing the coffin sat. Archaeologists discovered the 16-foot-long wooden coffin deep in the mound, which housed the sword and a 2-foot-long shield constructed from a mirror. While many demon slaying swords like this have been found in Japan, this one is the largest and oldest found in the country. Researchers suggest that the individual in the tomb was an elite who may have been in the military. The six inch blade was likely never used but only fashioned to be laid with the deceased in the mound. It is believed to have been placed there to help the deceased ward off evil spirits in the afterlife. Ancient Roman Camps this ancient discovery was made using remote image sensing, including photographs from Google Earth. Archaeologists have identified three sites that appear to have been temporary Roman military camps, stretched across territory in northern Arabia. They found a slight trace of a camp and further study identified two additional sites to the east, with the furthermost near the border between modern-day Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Just the outlines of the camps are visible via Google Earth. No buildings or high walls remain. The camps are so far out in the desert that no scientist has visited them on foot, although tire tracks show several vehicles have been in the area. Further investigations with Google Earth and from aerial photographs suggest that the outlines are the distinctive remains of temporary Roman military camps, built by soldiers following a standard defensive plan. In these cases, by piling up rocks, the camps, researchers said, have the classic playing card shape of a Roman fort or camp. Images showed the symmetrical entrances that were typical of temporary camps built by the Roman army when it was on the march. The camps are further apart than a person could easily walk in a day, about 23 to 27 miles, and experts estimate they were occupied by hundreds of mounted troops, maybe on camels. Gold-Covered Mummy Archaeologists say they have found a gold leaf covered mummy sealed inside a sarcophagus that had not been opened for 4,300 years. It was discovered down a 50 foot shaft at a burial site south of Cairo, Saqqara, where three other tombs were found. When the sarcophagus was examined, it was found to be completely sealed with mortar, just as the ancient Egyptians had left it 4,300 years ago. When the lid was raised, we found the mummy of a man covered with gold leaf. There is little information about who this person was, but it appears that he was wealthy. The mummy is thought to be one of the oldest and most complete non-royal corpses ever found in Egypt. Saqqara was an active burial ground for more than 3,000 years, and it is designated UNESCO World Heritage Site. It sits at what was the ancient Egyptian capital, Memphis, and is home to more than a dozen pyramids, including the Step Pyramid, near where the shaft containing the mummy was found. Humans lived in the region as far back as 400,000 years ago. 
However, while other news outlets are reporting that this is the oldest Egyptian mummy known to archaeologists, that's not the case. Rather, this mummy is the oldest complete mummy covered with gold. Neolithic Dagger While playing outside her school in Norway, an 8-year-old girl found an unexpected treasure, a flint dagger crafted by Stone Age people 3,700 years ago. The child showed the stone to her teacher who saw that the stone looked ancient. Soon after, archaeologists examined the artifact. The nearly 5-inch long tool is a rare find, say experts. Flint, a hard sedimentary rock, does not naturally occur in Norway. So, the dagger may have come from across the North Sea in Denmark. Based on its style, the dagger likely dates to the New Stone Age or the Neolithic, a time when prehistoric humans shaped stone tools and began to rely on domesticated plants and animals, build permanent villages and develop crafts such as pottery. Here in Norway, this period lasted from 10,000 BC to 1800 BC, with a number of hunter-gatherers permanently settling down to farm around 2400 BC. This type of dagger is often found with sacrificial finds, the archaeologists added. So, what else might be hiding in near where the little girl was playing? Unfortunately, nothing. To further investigate the area, archaeologists teamed up to explore the school's grounds, but they didn't find any other evidence dating back to the Stone Age. Lost Gems As many as 30 semi-precious stones have been discovered by archaeologists almost 2,000 years after their owners lost them at a site in modern-day Carlisle in England. The stones had dropped out of their ring settings, their glue probably weakened in the steamy baths. They were simply flushed into the drains when the pools and saunas were cleaned. Taking your valuables with you into a swimming pool is always a risk. The Romans loved to wear bling while they bathed, judging from the number of gemstones recovered from the drain of one of their bathhouses. Their loss would have been painful, as these were engraved gems known as intaglios. They bear images whose extraordinary craftsmanship suggests they would have been expensive items in their day, the late 2nd century or 3rd century. Experts think the bathers most likely had no clue that they lost their precious adornments until after they dried off and headed home. And even then, he wouldn't be surprised if they had thought that his appearance was the result of petty theft rather than accidental loss. In addition to the gems, archaeologists uncovered 40 women's hairpins and 35 glass beads during the excavation. 